Here's Brody Brazil. So here we are at Major League Baseball's All-Star break, and the Oakland A's have played 92 games. They have 70 left here in 2023. And straight away with this video, I need to declare this and establish it and probably reaffirm it to most of you. I love my job. I love my role. I love covering this team. There's no two ways about it, but that needs to be said first because pretty much everything I'm about to go into here in the rest of this video, it's going to be negative. And it directly corresponds to the last couple weeks and months of this 2023 season so far. The first half has been like no other that I've ever been a part of. And it's going to sound like maybe I'm complaining here to you, but I'm not. That's not the case. It has been frustrating. It has been taxing and fatiguing. But all I'm trying to do in the point of this video is just to be open and honest and transparent and document this first half, which has basically been the hardest and most difficult season of any team I've ever covered or followed in my life. I can't imagine that first half going any worse than it did for the fan, the general fan, on and off the field with the Oakland A's. And let me just relate that to myself for a second. I know how you're probably feeling. I also take this stuff in a very heavy way. It takes a toll on me because I take this stuff so seriously. Yeah, it would be so much easier if I could separate my personal and professional life, and I just don't care. I detach myself. I go home and forget about you know, potential relocation or loss after loss and the season this team is having on the field or even the future of where they might be in two to three years. It would be easier not to care. But that's not who I am. That's not how I operate. That's not an indicator of where I've been, where I want to go. I care. And that's why this has been difficult. Probably just like you. So let's get into it, and let's actually begin with the on-field stuff first. This is the headline that most people see, the amount of losing, the attendance, just the overall frustrations with this team, but that's actually been the easier part to deal with, if you can believe it. And that's on the heels of what we thought was the worst A's season of my lifetime, at least, 102 losses in 2022. That was their worst season since 1979, only their second 100-loss campaign while in Oakland. And this year, for the most part, being on pace to lose 120 games, like it was up at 130 a while back. Now they've, they've won some more games since then. So the pace right now is about a 120 loss season here in 2023. And the frustrating thing is looking back at last year, you kind of had the feeling that, all right, maybe this team bottomed out. They're doing their whole restock thing. They traded everybody away. And so this is going to be the season that hurts. It's going to get better after this. In fact, I even predicted that they would win 70 games in 2023. Well, yeah, that's why predictions are what they are. But it, it had that feel like, well, it's not going to get worse than it was last year. And it did. And there's also you know, the real-time effect of watching this team play out and maybe some of the trades that were made. You know, the big marquee players, Chapman, Olsen, Bassett, Sean Murphy, all the trades that were made for those players, now we're starting to slowly see the results trickle in of those trades. And I'm not here to say that those trades all didn't work out. Some of them brought back really good players. But it's taking its time for some of those players to develop. Also, some others aren't developing as planned. I mean, even just look at Christian Pache. Well, is developing, but wasn't doing it in Oakland. They traded him, and now in Philadelphia, he's faring much better. So frustrating in a sense that those trades, those big, important trades, maybe didn't garner enough yet. And I'm still willing to give them time, and I trust the A's front office. A talent evaluation has always been their strong point. But so far, it's not hitting yet, and we got to be patient. This typically takes two to three years after a big teardown until the A's get back to where they want to be. By the way, this is going to go as part of my off-field stuff in just a second. 
how hard is it now, not even knowing where the team will be in three years, how hard is it to care about prospects in the minor leagues right now and who they might become? Because you don't know what name is going to be on the front of their jersey in a couple years. So just looking at this first half again, like what have been the positives? Estieri Ruiz, obviously, stolen base leader, got hurt, obviously, at the end. Um, you know, didn't get to finish the first half. Hopefully, he pops back strong in the second half and just picks up where he left off. You know, I say it's the easy part to cover a team like this that's been dealing with so much struggle and losing and failure. And that's because you really don't have to make it personal. Like, there's nothing sinister going on here with the players. They're not trying any less. They're not any less motivated this season. It simply is just not working out on the wide scale. But obviously individually, but collectively as a team. The stats really tell all the stories that you need to know. You don't need to go much further than that with the players as far as like pointing the finger at the players. There's, there's not one place to do it. It's just the group and how things have gone. Nobody has really had a great season. But that's just all on the field stuff. Again, I'm saying that's the easy part. The off field stuff has been the hardest part in a number of different ways, but I'm going to focus on the one big thing that is on everybody's mind and potential relocation to Las Vegas. And I still can't believe, like, rewind to opening day, the thought that we would spend most of our season since then talking about relocation and the Nevada State Legislature and public funding and the team turning its back on Oakland and Howard Terminal, I, I still cannot believe that we're here. And I've said this before in videos. I'll say it again. It's surreal. Baseball teams don't move. It's happened once in the last 51 years. And it's not just speculation and whispers and a long shot of a threat. Like, we're here in the middle of this right now. And sometimes some people lose sight of that. Because things have been quiet now for a couple of weeks. People kind of get away from it. Their mind, you know, it escapes it for a bit. It's still very much going on behind the scenes. And the process with the relocation application from the A's to Major League Baseball, that's all going on. The commissioner, Manfred, has got his, his relocation committee. The owner of the Brewers, the Royals, and the Phillies are all in heading that committee to make a recommendation to the owners. But it's all been so unbelievable looking back at this process. I said surreal. Things like the nine-acre ballpark site. That's surreal. The special session it took for the Nevada State Legislature and lawmakers to approve public funding. Like, they passed on it. They didn't want to do it. The governor brought it back, and then they did it. Or even the way that the commissioner, Rob Manfred, has kind of responded to A's fans and the city of Oakland and saying there's been no deal. All of this, like, I can't believe... Some of these things are happening. It's almost like somebody watching a movie and just yelling at the screen. Obviously, you have no control over how the movie's going to play out. But it is that feeling of like, can you hear me right now? There's no possibility for feedback. We're all kind of watching this unfold. And sometimes how crazy it has played out. And there's a bunch of frustrated A's fans in Oakland. Conversely, there's also a bunch of defensive people in Las Vegas because of all this. And, I, you know, the longer it goes on, the, the more I realize it, the better I can, can visualize this. What's happening is, you know, some of these promises are being made and some of the plans are being laid out. And people in Oakland are saying, wait a second, that's, that's not really viable. That's not sustainable or even doable. And then you get people in Las Vegas who are accustomed to taking on challenges and accustomed to big projects and big money and big names coming in. And they're a little bit more cavalier with their spending and risk taking and all that stuff. But it's kind of like the analogy of somebody in Oakland saying, um, Mr. Las Vegas, or Mrs. Las Vegas, I don't think you can bench press 700 pounds. And then Mr. and Mrs. Las Vegas says, well, we do this. This is what we do. We're bodybuilders. We can do this. We'll, we'll find a way. We get it done here. And then they get defensive about people in Oakland saying, yeah, but this is not logistically possible. Anyway, my point is, and I notice it here in the comments on YouTube or on other social platforms, I get caught in kind of the crossfire between Oakland people and Las Vegas people. And I'm never here, I'm never here to knock Las Vegas. Like, this is not about you can or you can't do this. A lot of times in the videos I make, 
and the situations that I'm documenting, it's more of a question of, is this reasonable for you or any city or any land site for a ballpark, a major league venue across the country? This is kind of specific to you, but it's really not. And so being in the middle of all the comments and then people think I hate Las Vegas or I'm, I mean, clearly my intentions are this. I've never wanted the A's to move. I don't hide that. But I'm also here to earn people's trust and I'm never here to lie to you. I'm here to present things that have been put out there by others and kind of analyze them, digest them and bring them back to you with a little bit more perspective. Anyway, that that's the off-field stuff. And, and I haven't even got into the sentimental part yet. You saw the clip a couple weeks ago. I broke down in the middle of a, a pregame show, I guess it was. Or was it a postgame show? A studio show. And just realizing that in 10 years, you may not see kids around the East Bay or Northern California wearing A's hats anymore. And the whole brand, not the history, because that'll always live on, but something alive and something that's been around for all my life and has been around for 55 years is going to be extinct by choice. And that's the sentimental side of it. You know, I guess I got I get kind of caught up in the day to day of it, but that's the other bigger picture of of the hardest part of this season, the off field stuff. And we've known about parallel paths now for multiple years, but now that it has actually taken these twists and turns, that's the harder part to digest than anything. Again, losing games, you can figure out a way to deal with that. Losing your team forever? No question, that's the harder part. And I just get it back to a personal perspective here. I mean, I, I'm here at work right now. Come into work all the time. It's very difficult to pour so much energy into this and to not know if it exists in a year or two or whatever. And I also was talking about, you know, the pipeline and prospects and the future of Oakland A's baseball. Well, maybe it's just the future of A's baseball. And so now it's hard to really get into how well the double-A team is doing, and those players, and the triple-A, and who the A's have just drafted. How do you know they'll be part of your future as an Oakland A's fan? And I get it. Some fans, and probably none watching this video, some have kind of already just turned away. And maybe they'll come back. But at this point, based on the messaging and the way things have been laid out, it... You know, normally I'd say, hey, what are you doing? Right now, I, I, I got nothing to say. Some fans have just turned away and tuned out. So what does the second half bring? I mean, I, I said this is the most difficult first half of any season I've ever been a part of. More of the same? Can it get worse? Will we have some conclusions to the future? likely with Major League Baseball and a potential vote by owners. And obviously some in Nevada are trying to challenge the public money that's been approved with SB1. We'll see how that goes. It's been frustrating to kind of be in certain holding patterns, so to speak, but also to be where we're at in these pauses. They're not comfortable places by any means. So again, I know I've rambled. Thanks for sticking with me. But this has just been a video on how hard the first half of 2023 has been. And I congratulate you for sticking with the season and also sticking with this video. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's not a lot of positivity here. More to document where we're at right now. So thumbs up on it down below. You know, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, comment away, I guess. I'll sift through some of that. Uh, but most importantly, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so that I can definitely see you next time.